Number 54. Earth has a net charge that produces an electric field of approximately 150 newtons per coulomb downward at its surface. Letter A. What is the magnitude and sign of the excess charge? Noting the electric field of a conducting sphere is equivalent to a point charge at its center. All right. So basically, uh, here's a picture of the Earth. All right. The radius of the Earth is about 6.37 times 10 to the 6 kilometers. And I'm choosing a point up here talking about the electric field uh, at that particular point and the electric field as they told us is pointing downward. They also said that the electric field that's being produced basically at this point is equivalent to a point charge right here at its center. All right. So I'm going to call that just simply Q for now. All right. So basically, how do I find charge if I know the electric field at a distance relative to the charge and I know, remember that's just the radius, and I know the electric field strength. Well, we can use our formula over here on the right-hand side, right? It says that the electric field strength is basically a function of the electrostatic constant K multiplied by the absolute value of the charge that is producing that electric field at a distance divided by the distance between the charge and the electric field that we are either calculating or uh, talking about. So basically, all I need to do is solve this for Q, right? So doing a little math here, doing some algebra, we realize that it's just simply equal to the electric field multiplied by the radius squared, the distance between the two, you know, the charge and that point of interest divided by then that constant. So we can basically just plug in the value. So this is 150. The radius there is going to be 6.37 times 10 to the sixth squared, all then divided by 8.99 times 10 to the ninth. And let's throw it on in to the calculator. So 150 times 6.37 times 10 to the 6 squared divided by 8.99 times 10 to the 9th. And what do we get? We get about 6.77. So we have 6.77 times 10 raised to the 3, 4, 5. And that's in terms of coulombs. And there you go. That's all. So letter A, over and done with. Letter B, what acceleration will the field produce on a free electron near the Earth's surface? All right. So now pretend that we have over here an electron. All right. So there's going to be, let me draw a little point here. That point will represent the charge of an, uh, well, that'll represent an electron. And the charge of an electron, what is it? It's going to be equal to negative, right? Negative 9.11. That's the mass. What am I doing? negative 1.6 times 10 to the 19th, negative 19th, okay, it's a little early here, so I apologize, uh, negative 19th coulombs. All right, so that's the charge, right? So now, remember, anytime we place a uh, charge in an electric field, a force is then acting on the charge, all right? It's according to the formula over here on the right-hand side. Right? That formula tells us that the electric field strength will be equal to the force applied to a particular charge in that electric field divided by the charge that is experiencing that electric field. So in terms of the context of this problem over here, you can assume, not assume, but basically this blue electric field is an external electric field that is being produced by this point charge at the center of the Earth. Okay. So what we can do here is we can now calculate the force, right? If you know the electric field strength that is acting on this particular charge and you know the charge, you can find the force, right? Now, what I'd like for you to do is, you know, in terms of this formula, there is no absolute value, but I would just plug in the magnitudes, okay? I've mentioned this before. Don't worry about the signs. I, I would highly recommend drawing a picture and then getting the intuition about the direction uh, from the picture. Okay. So, uh, what I can do now is solve this for force. So we realize that force is going to be equal to the electric field multiplied by the charge. Okay. So the force on that electron is equal to E times Q. So that's great. Uh, why don't we calculate it quickly? All right. Since, since we know that, let's just get it out of the way. So it's 150 times 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th. So that's about 2.4, 2.4 times 10 to the minus 17th newtons. So this is the force on that electron, right? But they didn't want to know the force. They wanted to know the acceleration. So now you got to think, well, how is force and acceleration related? Oh, wow. F is equal to MA, right? So in order to find A, what do you got to know? M, 
and F. We know F. What's M? Mass of what? Well, what are we talking about? Remember, you want to find the force that we, or we just found the force acting on an electron. So therefore, that will be equal to the mass of the electron and multiplied by the acceleration that that, that electron is experiencing. So basically, we need to know that value. So the mass of the electron, we know to be 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. And now, voila, we know everything we need. So we can now calculate, right? So the acceleration is simply equal to the force divided by the mass. That's simply going to be equal to then the 2.4 times 10 to the minus 17th, all divided by the mass of that electron, which is 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31. And what do we get? So we get that divided by 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31. We get a value of about 2.63. So 2.63 times 10 to the uh, 13th, right? Meters per second squared. A very large acceleration. Well, and the reason for that is because the electron is, the mass is so itty bitty bitty tiny, right? Little, little mass. So that takes care of letter B. And now how about letter C? So what does it say? What mass object with a single extra electron will have its weight supported by this field? So what does the term supported mean in terms of forces? What does it mean? Well, pretend you have an ob pretend you had an object, right? This little dot will represent the object. If this object has a mass, you know gravity will also be pulling downward on it, right? So we can draw now the force of gravity pointing down, F sub G. But if it's not moving down, if it's supported, what does that mean? That means there must also be an equal but opposite force pointing in the opposite direction, right? So now in the context of this problem, it's being supported by, it says supported by this field, right? So that electric field at this particular point is producing an electric force that is going to counteract the weight of the object. All right. So essentially now what I realize is that the electric force that's acting on this particular object will equal the force due to gravity acting on that object. All right. So why don't we just, so what is the force? Well, the force is the same as we calculated over here. Why? Why is that the same? Well, because they're saying, what mass of object with a single extra electron? So the force, the electric force has nothing to do with the mass of the object. It has everything to do with the charge of the object, right? And the distance between the, the two charges, right? If I'm talking about the overall force formula or the strength of the electric field. So basically, this, the force value here, the electric field force, isn't changing from what we calculated in B. So that'll be 2.4 times 10 to the minus 17th. Now, what do you know force of gravity to be? Meaning expand on it. It's going to be equal to the mass multiplied by the acceleration due to gravity. What is it? 9.8. Oh, wow. One unknown. What do we do? We solve it. So 2.4 times 10 to the minus 17, all divided by 9.8. And here we get a value of about 2.45. So 2.45 times 10 to the minus 18 kilograms. That would be the weight that would exactly, that would be the weight of the object uh, that could be, can be supported by this electric field. All right. So cool. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it very much. Please remember to help us out and subscribe. And we look forward to helping with more problems. Take care.